All right, everybody. Tuesday, July 18th. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. 10 o'clock in the morning central time, 11 o'clock Eastern. And we are joined today by Coach Fontel Mines, whose official role with the Hokies is the offensive recruiting coordinator slash wide receivers coach. He hails from Richmond. He attended Hermitage High School and played for the University of Virginia. After a few years with the Chicago Bears, he began his coaching career at Dowen, spent time at Richmond, Delaware, JMU, ECU, and ODU including a brief stint with the Washington Redskins on the coaching side as well. Coach Mines, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. How you doing? Man, I'm doing awesome. Appreciate you guys for having me. Definitely heard a lot of good things, a lot of good things. So I'm excited. Awesome. Well, let's start here in the beginning. Coming off of the season last year, when you guys all got together as a staff and you thought about what do we need to improve on on the field, what do we need to improve on in recruiting, what does the receiving room specifically need to get better at, what were the biggest priorities for you this off season and how did you attack them? I mean, just from, from my standpoint of, you know, being responsible for the receivers for us, we need to play better. Uh, we need to be more consistent. Uh, we need to find more playmakers and we need to find guys who can, you know, which, which we like to call erasers who can kind of get you out of some bad stuff. Uh, you know, the quarterback can't always be perfect. Uh, they got a lot of things in their brain that they're kind of negotiating through and working through. Uh, so we've got to be the guys that kind of step up and make plays, uh, you know, for our offense. Recruiting-wise, uh, the, the biggest thing recruiting-wise, we wanted to hold on to the guys that we had late December. Uh, we felt like we had a really good nucleus of receivers from Takai, a slot dynamic return guy, to the late get that we got with Chance Fitzgerald and Aiden Green. Uh, I mean, those guys were just super, super important to us and, you know, how we wanted to continue to rebuild this room. Uh, so, you know, those were really the main two things I wanted to focus on towards the end of the season. Uh, but at the end of the day, we, you know, receiver wise, we, we, we got to play better. Coach, we uh, we ran into Jack Hollifield and Griffin Duggan over the weekend here in Charlotte at the Luke Combs show. And they said that they were pretty fired up about some of the newcomers, specifically uh, in the bad boys wide receivers room. Yeah. Uh, what should Hokie Nation be expecting this fall from Daquan Felton? Uh, Jay Lane and Ali Jennings this fall. Man, listen, uh, so, so, so excited about all three of those guys for three different reasons. I mean, they're all proven, you know, at their university they came from. They've all played a ton of football. And the biggest thing that I love about all three of them is no egos. Uh, they're leaders, uh, they're mature, and they've really set the standard this summer for how you work. And, you know, you you put those guys with the mix of Stephen Gosnell and Tucker Holloway and Dewan Lofton and some older guys who didn't have a ton of experience. And you add those guys with experience. Uh, they give you another coach in the room. Um, it's, it's, it's times where I come in the receiver room and uh, they'll have their own meeting going and they're just kind of running the show. And I don't know how much you've heard. Just so we had a big judge competition this summer. And the top three guys in the competition caught over 11,000 passes uh, in like a four, four or five week span. Um, and I can tell you that wasn't happening last summer, you know, for a lot of different reasons. But just the expectation in the room has definitely risen. So I see him right behind you. I know you're in the wide receiver room right now. Uh, Isaiah Ford, he's a former teammate of mine, one of the best to absolutely ever attack. I know he came in, spent a little time with the wide receivers. Tucker Holloway said that he had a tremendous impact on him individually. But can you speak to what it was like to have him back in Blacksburg, the impact he had on your room, and just getting to chat with him a little bit? Priceless. Uh, priceless, man. You talk about humble, hardworking, uh, just a servant leader. Uh, he did a great job of you know, finding his way in our room. He, he's, he was here for a week. Uh, so I think we had three practices while he was here. Uh, and he watched every single practice that we watch uh, with the group together, and he gave them their impact. He gave them feedback. Um, it was days he was out there on the practice fields, three or four guys working techniques, working releases. I mean, I'll even take it a step further. I, I believe Tucker Holloway went on his vacation to spend some time with him in Florida just to get some extra work. So just for me, is I, I, I want to do a really good job of making every alumni feel like they have – an opportunity to come back and help these younger guys because I think that's super, super important. I mean, they see these guys on the wall, uh, Isaiah and Andre Andre Davis. I mean, what those guys meant to this program, 
is is just through the roof. So if they have a chance to sit in the same meeting rooms and give them coaching points, even if it's the same coaching point I give them, sometimes it just hits a little bit different uh, from somebody who's still actively playing, who's done it, um, and they can kind of relate to those guys a little bit better. So I don't I don't have any egos. I don't have any problem with those guys coming back and spending as much time as possible, you know, with the whole group. I, I know I already said this, but uh, we talked to Taiwan Garbett last year about the junkyard dogs on the D-line. You guys got the bad boys in the receiver room. What is the culture? Describe to me the culture of the bad boys receiver room. Just swag. Just swag, arrogance, uh, confidence. You know, we want to play on the edge. We just want to play with that demeanor. Uh, you know, just like you said, just bad boys of just playing together. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, playing together and playing confident and playing with an edge. So just trying to create that edge uh, for the room. And those guys have, you know, they've taken it and ran with it. And then, uh, you know, on the topic of of swagger, um, who are some of the dudes? Who are some of the freaks, whether they're in the receiver room, but also, you know, outside of your unit throughout the rest of the team? Uh, just athletically? Yeah, some of, the, some of the athletic freaks, some of the guys that kind of jump off the page. Um, in my room for starters would probably be Xavier Bradshaw. Uh, you just talk about dynamic, you talk about speed, you talk about quickness. Uh, I mean, he, he's got it all in, in Kyron drones for sure. Offensively him and him and Bayshaw are just freakish athletes. Um, uh, but just how big and strong Kyron is and how fast he is and how athletic he is, is is, is pretty scary. <laughs> so, Defensively, I'm trying to think uh, just athletically off the charts who, who stands out. Um, I don't I don't want to miss anybody. I don't want to overlook anybody uh, coming in because obviously I work a little bit closely with the uh, with the offense. So I'm gonna hold on defense. I may circle back around to that one later. So I have to ask this. I had it as the first question that we did in towards the end here. Coming from a guy that loves Charlottesville. I love Charlottesville. Love going down there. Have a great time every single time. I have some good friends who graduated from UVA. Um, what is it like being on the other side of the rivalry? And how has your family enjoyed being in Blacksburg? <laughs> you know, it's it's crazy. It was a little different at first. Uh, I, I'll have to admit, when I first got here, uh, my wife graduated from University of Virginia as well. Um, so both of us, and it's, and it's super crazy because my son, who's three, uh, if you say let's go, he's going to say Hokies. I think that's probably one of the first things he learned how to spell was Hokies. He goes to the daycare here over on campus. So uh, just for us, man, um, this this community has done a really good job of, you know, just being who they are, man, just being great people, uh, accepting us. Um, I can I can take any joke that anybody gives to me just about, you know, the whole UVA and Virginia Tech thing, but – I've always had a, lot, a ton of respect for just this program from afar and a lot of guys that I've, I've been really good friends with. Uh, I mentioned to you guys, Xavier DB, him and I played, you know, in an all-star game together and then played against each other for four years. Uh, my best friend, Dwayne Brown, who we grew up together, uh, who I talk to about every day, you know, he just, he decided to come to Virginia Tech and I went to Virginia. So uh, just a lot of similarities to places, but very different, uh, you know, very different. Um, but we're having, a heck of a time and it's a really good experience for us um and they had their opportunity <laughs> shifting over to the recruiting side i know you can't talk specifically about players that have not signed their uh nil yet or nli i hate yeah. that those are that those are so similar so but close, they have yeah. not <laughs> story yet. um so i'll go ahead and do it for you you are killing it on the recruiting path virginia tech's doing an absolutely amazing job um i want to shout out stephen collier because he submitted this question uh, as a recruiter building out your room, what do you look for both in prospects on the field, off the field, personality? What is kind of the mold of what you're looking for? Uh, mentality would be the first thing. Um, you know, mentality, and that kind of goes hand in hand with just, you know, the bad boy slogan, just the mentality to want to be better, the, the mentality to want to do extra. Um, because, you know, everybody's going to have, 15 practice in the spring, right? So who's doing the extra, right? Who's out there on the judge machine? Who's in here in the, in the meeting room watching film? We have access to so many resources and those some guys just quite frankly won't take advantage of it. And some will. And the ones that do, they're going to separate themselves between being good and great. Uh, so mentality is the biggest quality that I look for. 
And when you talk about just on the field, just physical attributes, it would, have, it would definitely have to be what are you doing when you have the ball in your hands and what are you doing without the ball in your hands? Especially at the high school level, you may play 70 snaps, have 10 catches. Now you got 60 plays in the game. How are you impacting the game in a positive way? Right. Is it is it run blocking on the perimeter? Is it being special on special teams? Is it, you know, taking a, a hitch and going 70? Right. Just trying to find different ways to impact the game. And I think I think if we finally got this room to where those guys all get along, it's, it's competitive and it's no better way to get better than pressure and competition. Uh, so that's, you know, two things I try to push on those guys daily. You know, you guys have done a really, really good job so far on this 24 cycle. We're really fired up. What would you say has actually been the most challenging part uh, of this cycle so far? Um, you know, crazy enough, the, the probably the most challenging part is we signed really big classes, our first two classes here, right? We only graduate seven seniors. So this class is going to be a little bit smaller than the previous two. So just being very de deliberate on – who we're targeting, who we're going after, who we're putting, not putting pressure because that's just not how we operate, but who we're recruiting the hardest. It's a ton of talent in this state. Uh, I think, I mean, we all know that. We've heard Coach Pry say it a, a million times, and it's, and it's very true and very accurate. Uh, if we take care of this state and we win the state, uh, we, we're going to have a high success rate. So just that's probably the most difficult thing is just being able to I, I want every receiver that I can get. I might not be able to do that, right? Uh, Coach Crook, the same way. He may want four offensive linemen. Sometimes you, you may not be able to do that, uh, and then it just becomes a numbers game. How do you differ or do you differ your conversations with a high school kid to somebody who's uh, tra uh, somebody that's transferring, uh, transferring? How do you approach the transfer portal? How exactly do those conversations differ? Well, the transfer portal is a little bit unique and different because usually you can gather more information about the prospect. Um, you talk about Ali Jennings, who I've known for his entire life. You talk about Jalen Lane, who Coach Jones has known his family for his entire life. And then you talk about Daquan Felton, whose uncle played here. Right. So just the connections and the relationships that's usually what helps you thrive in the portal and just giving you a little bit better background on who you're getting. Um, and everybody knows everybody in the college, you know, college coaching world. So it's easier just to pick up the phone and call three coaches at the same school, whether it's a strength coach, maybe academics, maybe it's a full-time coach. Hey, tell me about Ali Jennings. How was he for you academically? How was he off the field? Um, not that you can't get that same information from high school, but usually in high school, you're just dealing with just a high school coach or maybe a seven on seven coach to try to filter through some of that information. So for me, I think the biggest difference is you can get you can gain a little bit more information about the transfers than you can the high school kids. Now, the window is shorter to recruit the transfers. So you've got more time to actually get to know the high school prospects a little bit longer, but usually uh, in, in most cases, all transfers, some coach has some type of history with that kid that you're trying to target. It's a little corny, but we ask every single coach that comes on here. What okay. is your pitch on Virginia Tech? Um, when you're talking about the lifestyle, when you're talking about the culture you're building on the at the football field, the opportunity to get a degree from this institution, what is your pitch to recruits? Um, I don't know, man. I really don't. I really don't have a pitch. I just I just. I try the best to just be myself and to be honest and to be transparent. Uh, if there's anybody that can read through BS, it's, it's the high school kids. Like, so the minute that you're trying to sell them or send some type of recruiting pitch, they can realize that. But I think this staff has done a really good job of just selling ourselves, man, just being who we are. Uh, we've got a great leader in Coach Pry, and what he, you know, what he says is, is real, being family-oriented. I mean, that's super, super big for me. And you're going to hear a lot of coaches say that, family, family, family. Uh, but then when you get there in the organization, it's a little bit different. Um, the fact that my wife and my son can come here on a Saturday during an official visit or a Tuesday during the season and unannounced and we don't have to get permission, I mean, that's, that's priceless for me. So I think, you know, the more you have that and those parents and those recruits see that, 
the more that they're over at our houses, the more we take them out to eat and just spend time with them away from this building. Uh, I mean, you got to love them. I mean, you got to love them hard. You got to coach them harder. And I, I think this staff does a really good job at it. I mean, we got good people, man. We got good husbands. We got good fathers. Um, you know, kudos to Coach Pry. He's done a you know really phenomenal job of you know putting the staff together. And I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, and I know it's a different situation, but what kept you in Blacksburg? You were a, you're a hot commodity then, you're a hot commodity now, and I'm sure other programs would be really interested to have you coaching their wide receiver group and killing it on the recruiting kill as well. What kept you in Blacksburg? What, what are you building towards? What do you see here in Blacksburg? What, what ended up with you staying here? Uh, it's a couple things, man. Um, I've seen firsthand on the other sideline what this place can be. Um, I've seen the history, I've seen the wins, I've seen the bowl game streak, and then my wife loves it here. My wife's happy. Um, and this, you know, honestly, in short, it's, it's Brent Pry. You know, that's that's what kept me here. Um, you talk about somebody who, who took a chance on somebody, um, a lot of reasons not to hire me. Uh, he found all the reasons to hire me, and he, and, he, and he gave me an opportunity. So, you know, I'm forever grateful for that. And you know, I, I believe in loyalty and I believe in, you know, what's, what's right is right. And, uh, you know, and I trust that guy and I trust his vision and I trust, you know, what we're doing here. Coach Mines, some may say that this is home. So we're glad to have you here in Blacksburg. <laughs> we're just going over to our rapid fire questions. Again, I, I ask everybody this one. If you could have dinner with four people, dead or alive, Ooh. who are those four people and where are you going to eat? Oh, all right. Randy Moss, for sure. Jay-Z, got to be Jay-Z and J. Cole. They're, they're like my favorite all, um, artists. Randy Moss was my favorite player. And then um, Obama. Solid now, where, where am I going to eat? Do I have to be in Blacksburg to go to eat? You can or? go wherever you want. You can go wherever you want. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite places to eat now is actually Steak 48 in Charlotte. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a good spot. Oh, yeah. right <laughs> Big that's time. where we go. So those are my four. <laughs> This one's from uh, this one's from Hokey Hack. I love this question. Um, you're on the road, spending a lot of time in the 804. Where is your favorite place to stop and eat while you're out recruiting? Is there somewhere you're always stopping? Oh yeah, that's easy. Southern Kitchen. If any coach has been with me to Richmond, Coach Pry, Coach Jones, Coach Price, Coach Marv, you name them, we went to Southern Kitchen to eat. Phenomenal soul food downtown Richmond. That answers the next one. That's the best restaurant. I, the next one was best restaurant in RVA, but is there anywhere outside of RVA that you like to stop? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I answered with another one. If, if I'm going outside yeah. of Richmond uh, and I'm going to make my way to Charlotte, I'm going to go to State 48. There you go. Here we go. You guys are making me hungry over here. Right before <laughs> lunchtime. You're right down the street, man. You <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Who is the funniest wide receiver on the team? Oh man, I got we got, I got a room now. <laughs> no, by he doesn't even realize it sometimes. But Latrell Sutton is hilarious. Uh, Bradshaw is hilarious. Ali Jennings, and then um, just very sneaky funny will be Steve Stephen Gosnell. Love the sneaky funny. Yeah, country Steve is what they call. <laughs> when you're out on the road. What are you listening to? We heard J. Cole. We heard Jay-Z. Uh, who else we got in the playlist? You know, it depends on what the vibe is. If I've got a long trip, I'm going to go with J. Cole or Jay-Z. If i got a little bit shorter trip, I'm going to go with some type of soul, old school, classic R&B mix. Yeah, I'm usually just a playlist guy. I get on Spotify and just hit one of them playlists and go. Sometimes I just don't even listen to anything. (laughs) And then uh, the last rapid fire question: Best TV show of all time? Oh, Martin, easy, <laughs> absolutely classic. My son, why, I have to try to introduce my son to Martin uh, as the the older he gets. Martin and Fresh Prince are like two classics that I grew up on. Very classic. Yeah. Letters from the lunch pail. These are fan submitted uh, Twitter questions. Here we got a few, and then we'll wrap up. All right. So this one is actually I submitted this one last okay. night. <laughs> you saw Ollie Jennings in the Harvey's Chevrolet Buick ad spot uh, yeah. on YouTube, and uh, he, he we're doing ad spots on this podcast as well. Does Ollie Jennings have the potential to make it big in Hollywood? Absolutely. 
you talk about personality, charisma, like he's got it. He he can talk to anybody for any amount of time. He's got it. I love this question uh, from Shelton Moss. Is the willingness to be a good perimeter blocker something that is coachable or does it have to come from the player? It's non-negotiable. If, if you're going to play in my room, you're going to block. No questions asked. So I guess it is coachable <laughs> to answer the question. Uh, Jay Bash from 89 says, hey, coach, loving what you're doing. Uh, first, I have a non-football related question. If you had to pick a superpower, what would it be? Mm, be invisible. So the week of wherever we're playing, I can go sit in their, their meeting rooms and figure out how they're going to play us. <laughs> Little uh, Bill Belichick without being invisible. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> and then uh, if you had to pick one wide receiver to take your spot in a foot race besides Cole Beck, who are you picking? Oh, Bradshaw, for sure. Bradshaw or Tucker Holloway. Last one we have here from Grant Pollock. Uh, there seems to be significant momentum with the high school coaches and their view of the program. What goes into ensuring that so many schools feel like they're being made a priority across the Commonwealth? Uh, just effort, just effort and consistency. Uh, I think that's probably one of the biggest messages that, you know, Coach Pryor made a point uh, since he took the job. And, you know, every I mean, we have coaches clinics when we travel, you know, we've traveled to Richmond, we've traveled to Northern Virginia, we've traveled to Virginia Beach, we've traveled to Charlotte, uh, and just being consistent in our effort and being consistent in our message uh, of what we're doing and how we're doing it. You know, we're bringing coaches on campus and, you know, cooking steaks and, you know, just those opportunities to be with us, um, whether we're talking ball or whether we're not talking ball, to get a better feel for us personally uh, and get to know them a little bit better. Um, you know, I have a pretty good history with a lot of guys in, in Richmond, uh, but, you know, when you get an opportunity to go to Northern Virginia and go to Charlotte and to build new connections, um, that goes a long way for those guys. Last one I have here, and then we'll wrap up. You have about 15-ish days until report day for camp. How do you spend this next couple of weeks, and what are the biggest priorities for the wide receiver room uh, before we roll the ball out in uh, September? Well, I've spent my, my vacation in Disney, watering my grass, Chasing after my son <laughs> and recruiting, um, but just try to you know try to get back to my family and uh, you know spend some time in Richmond about a little bit over a week uh, there on some vacation and just you know family and friends um, you know especially my son and my wife because once the season starts it starts and we're and we're rocking and rolling uh, but just positionally just for the receivers um, I think our biggest focus is just challenging each other every day. Uh, to get better, find something to get better with every day. Um, the competition aspect is there. Uh, the want to is there. Um, those guys had a tremendous, tremendous summer, uh, whether it was just being able to watch film or whether it was doing extra with jugs or whether it was conditioning or whether it was routes on air with, with all the quarterbacks. I mean, those those guys have been working, man, they, and they want to win and they're putting in the work to do it. So uh, now it's just a matter of putting it all together. A masterclass from Jay Z was the Blueprint album that came out, and a masterclass from Coach Minds and the coaching staff is recruiting the footprint. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Appreciate your time, Coach Minds, and you enjoy the rest of your vacation and recruitment. And we'll talk to you again soon. I appreciate you guys, man. Thanks for having me.